Okay, so what we're going to try to do here is explain to you how to take one of these speed controllers that we sell that is non-BEC and install a battery eliminator circuit on it so that you can run the whole thing off of a single flight battery. Uh, typically, quad rotor ESCs come with this setup, uh, and that's because you're going to plug this into um, your flight controller uh, rather than uh, directly from elsewhere. So as a result of that, you, um, you don't have your power wire coming in here. So we're going to uh, supply that. So this ESC directly receives your full battery voltage. And then you can't just run that power back. You have to run it through a step down. So what we're going to show you is how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder in power into this little guy. So I want my input side right here. To have the red wire coming in. And then we're going to solder in two grounds. And that just, there are better ways potentially to do this. However, this is the one that I simply find to be the easiest. It provides me with a certain degree of redundancy. And I don't want to get a cold solder joint there. There we go. And I'll just tin this one in advance. Now, lastly, we're going to take um, a wire for a servo. So this little connector is the type of connector uh, that you plug into your servo. So it would plug in right here. I took this from a broken servo. And we're going to go ahead and tin the end of this. And then we will... Um, So I'll tin the end of this guy. There you go. And so this is on the output side, and it's labeled on here output five volts. You can act, well, it's, it ranges from five to twelve volts. I don't know how to adjust it uh, beyond that. Um, is I've never needed to, and it, and these iFlight BECs default to five volts output. So next, I'm going to bring our speed controller into play. So I have peeled back some of the uh, shrink tubing on this. Excuse everything falling over in the background. And I want my input of 12 volts coming in here. And so I'm just soldering that onto this input terminal from my battery. I do the same thing on the ground side. that back up. Now we're going to come around. Now usually this is actually on the top of the board. 
in between these two terminals. This one has it on the bottom. And all I'm going to do on this guy is bring my ground receiver side and bring it in. And that just makes sure that this circuit is complete. There are other ways to do that, um, but this is just one that I've found to be particularly reliable. And now, all we have to do is I'm going to come in here and uncoil this assembly. I'm going to twist this wire backwards. And then these will hopefully intertwine. More importantly, I can now uh, insert this in and you hear it click and it's in and now that connection is mostly elegantly stuck together so now if we fire this up we will get uh, power coming in to our receiver or uh, electric free flight timer or what have you and that's really all there is to it We'll come back once I've got connectors on here and a battery in, and we'll demonstrate. Okay, I decided I'm going to show you one more thing. So these are your XT30 connectors that you use on a lot of small, high-performance airplanes. So this is your battery side connector. This is your ESC connector. What we're going to do is we're going to plug those together while we solder them. And the reason we're going to do that is when you are soldering this guy, Plastic is going to get hot and tend to melt. If you have the other side plugged into it, that will stabilize those connectors so that your receiver, uh, so that your plug does not get damaged. So now, all I have to do is come in here and tin this. Maybe. Come on, you can do better than that. These are like gold connectors, so there we go. Perfect. Don't forget your shrink tubing. impatient. And now all we have to do is find a heat gun after we slide these up here and good to go. Okay so what we're going to do now is we will install our motor here onto these wires. Looks like I may have gotten some crud on one of them. Now you can reverse the direction of the motor by simply exchanging two um, connectors there. We've got our receiver here. Make sure, again, one last check that the polarities are all this, all correct. We'll go ahead and hook the servo in as well, just to demonstrate function. As you can see, everything works. So we have safe power there. Ignore the complaining thing. And let's see, I think I've got... Oh, that's right. I have throttle on a switch. So. There we go. 
So that's all that you need to do to run a um, quad ESC through standard setup with a receiver on an airplane. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.